All right, so we are in our final lesson of chapter one. And in this lesson, we are talking about a super important concept called standard deviation. Now, standard deviation sounds really fancy. If somebody talks about standard deviation, you kind of assume they know what they're talking about. And if you ask the average adult, what does standard deviation mean? You're probably going to get a lot of blank stares. Now, even though it sounds fancy and sounds complicated, it's really not bad at its core. In this video, my job is to explain to you guys what standard deviation is show you how it's found, not just like memorizing a formula, but why do we actually do it the way it, it's done, and make you able to kind of use it comfortably in your kind of everyday approach to statistics. Standard deviation is a huge concept that is not going away. We talk about it all year long. So it's really important here that we build sort of an intuitive understanding for what this concept is. So let's get to it in our little dot plot right here. So we have like a little class survey on how many pets you all own and people give their answers, okay? I ask in this problem, how far are the values from the mean on average? First off, that is exactly what standard deviation is. All standard deviation does is it tells us the typical distance of values from the mean. So standard deviation at its core measures the average distance of values to the mean. So let me show you what that means. If you were to actually calculate the average of all of those data points, the mean of this data set is five. So the mean of the data set for number of pets, if you average all those numbers is five. And I want to know how far away are kids on average from that mean of five. So for example, if I'm this kid right here, I have exactly five pets. I am zero away from five. If I'm this kid over here who has seven pets, I'm two away from five. If I'm down here with one pet, I'm four away from five, etc. So if I took all those different distances, how far away are you, how far are you, how far are you from the mean, and I average those somehow, I would get presumably basically a pretty good understanding of what the standard deviation is. So let me toss out some numbers here and you think in your head if it would be a plausible standard deviation. Could the standard deviation of this data set be 10? Okay. So the answer to that is no, it shouldn't be 10 because none of my dots, not one of them is 10 away from the mean. I don't have a single 15 right here. So clearly the standard deviation is gonna be something smaller than 10, smaller than five even when you look at this because all of my data points are less than that distance away. Could my standard deviation be one? Well, this guy right here is a zero, and these people are one away from the mean, but I've got a guy who's two, I've got another one over here, I've got a lot of people who are more than one away. So you can kind of sandwich that standard deviation and get a basic sense of it's probably somewhere between like one and five, maybe one and four, maybe it's like two point something or three point something or somewhere in that range. That at its core is what I want you guys to be able to do with standard deviation. Now, when I see you in class, we will probably do this together. But what I have right here is a little practice, is um, a little dot plot. So this website just makes dot plots. So look over here where my cursor is. The mean of this graph is a 4.9, and values go all the way up to 12 and all the way down to zero. How far on the average would you say these dots are from 4.9? And just by looking at this right now, just off the cuff, I would say it's like high threes, low fours, maybe like a 4.1 or 4.2 for the standard deviation right here. And if we actually look at it, it's a 4.3 for the standard deviation. So you take how far everybody is from that mean and you average those. That's what standard deviation tells you. Okay, so let's do another one here um, just to give you guys a sense of how this works. So I'll pick a smaller data set. Let's say I have one with 15 data points right here. The mean of this data set is 40.8, and the values go all the way up to the 60s, all the way down to the negatives right here. 
I'm going to say somewhere in the 20s on average for the distance, like 22, let's call it for standard deviation. And actually it's a 23.1. So I did pretty well on that one, which is cool. I don't always do well with them, but I feel vindicated that I got it on this one in the video here. Although I guess you guys have no idea how many times I did this before I actually showed you. So anyway, one more just to give you an idea. Let's do one with a bigger data set. If you were to look at this data set of 35 points, the mean of this data set is a 98. So based on that, what would you say the standard deviation is? What's the typical distance from the mean? We'll probably do this as like a contest in class if we have the chance. I'm going to say 27 for typical distance and it's 18. So I didn't do so good right there. So yeah, you can get a sense of what it means to be standard deviation. It's just how far on average the numbers are from that mean. So let's get back to our notes right here. And in our notes, um, we're going to move on to the next slide. So what are some similarities and some differences between the range and IQR and the standard deviation? So similarities, they are both measures of spread. IQR and standard deviation and range for that matter are all just attempting to answer the question, how spread out is my data? They just go about it in different ways. So the range is like our nice basic max minus min. IQR is Q3 minus Q1. Standard deviation, we haven't learned how yet, but they're all trying to answer the same question in different ways. They're just different calculations for spread. There are more differences than there are similarities, I would say, between these approaches right here. So IQR is tied to the median. You can't have IQR without first finding the median, that middle point in the data sets. The standard deviation is tied to the mean because it's the distance from the mean. So the standard deviation tied to the mean is very important. You can't have standard deviation without having a mean. So standard deviation and mean are like a duo. They go together. Median and IQR are a duo that go together. Range is kind of dumb. We don't use it very much. Okay. So the median is resistant to outliers. The IQR is resistant to outliers. Mean not resistant to outliers. Neither is standard deviation. So it is not a resistant measure of spread. We still like it better and use it more than we use IQR because it's easier to calculate. We can do more stuff with it. But if you have a data set with outliers, we would kind of throw away the mean and standard deviation and gravitate more towards mean, median, and IQR. So let's talk about how you actually calculate the standard deviation. And there is going to be a formula that's on your formula sheet that you don't have to memorize. But what I want to do in this video is walk you logically through how you would calculate this process. Okay. So the first thing that would be logical to do is to find the mean. And we already know, I told you already, the mean for this data set is five. So what I would want to do first in this problem is figure out how far away each of my dots is from five. So if I said I am a seven, I'm two away. How did I do that earlier when I said, oh, that point is two away? I subtracted. So your first step when you calculate standard deviation, step one is going to be to subtract your value minus the mean. Okay. Why do you subtract the value minus the mean and not the mean minus the value? If I do value minus mean, seven minus five is a two. I'm two above the mean. If I had a one, one minus five is negative four. I'm four below the mean. So you'll have negatives and positives and then it'll make sense which is which. So it's better if you do it this way. So what I would do is take my first data point. I have a one. One minus five is a negative four. Then I have a three. Three minus five is negative two. And then I have three fours. So I have four minus five, three separate times right here. So I have negative one, negative one, negative one. Almost out of space here. I have five minus five, which is zero. And then what I'm gonna have is a seven minus five is a two. I have eight minus five is three, and I have nine minus five, which is four. 
So these numbers right here are my differences. This is how far each of my points is from the mean. That's the first thing you do. You take each value, you subtract the mean. Now, what I want to do with that big list of numbers right there is combine them somehow so I get one big kind of happy number that I can use to talk about spread. So the logical way to do that is to add them all up. We're just going to add them up and combine them. But what will happen if you add up all these numbers? You can try it if you want. Add all these numbers together. It turns out you will get exactly zero when you do that. Every time you do it, you will get zero when you find the distance to the mean. Why is that? Well, you have negative numbers and you have positive numbers that are basically just going to wash each other out completely, and you'll get zero every single time. So adding these numbers straight up isn't going to be helpful because they just cancel each other. It would be better if they were all the same sign, so all positive numbers, because then I could actually combine them and get a meaningful total distance. I kind of did that earlier in the video when I said this point down here was four away. I just disregarded the negative. Now, one way you can do that is you can take an absolute value. Absolute value makes numbers positive. So you could just do absolute value on all of those and get positive things and use those. It turns out though, for any of you that are in calculus, you might already know this. If you're not, just take my word for it. Absolute values are kind of messy to work with in math. They're messy in the sense that you can't differentiate them for your calc kids. Like there's a weird point right there that you can't deal with. But even if you don't understand calculus, just understand absolute values are hard to undo. It is hard to undo an absolute value and get back to where you started. So even though it would make sense to take the absolute value of these numbers and use those, absolute values are gross in terms of math. Another thing you can do that turns all these numbers positive, if you think back to algebra two, is you can square them. So instead of choosing to do the absolute value, because absolute value is gross to work with, we are going to square all of those numbers. So negative four squared makes a 16. Negative two squared is positive four, positive one, positive one, positive one, zero still, and then four, nine, 16. These are all of my numbers here squared. And again, I squared them because I want them to be positive so they don't wash out, but absolute values aren't great to work with. So I've got that going for me. Then, now that they're not gonna wash each other out, my step three is going to be to add them together, okay? So I'm gonna add up all these numbers. That's 20, 21, 22, 23, 27, 36, 52, I'm pretty sure. Again, should have done this ahead of time, I never do. 29, 30, 31, 32, 36, 52. So you add them all up and you get one big number, okay? Now we talked about how abs, or sorry, Standard deviation is going to be your typical distance from the mean, your average distance to the mean. So after we add up, picture when you do a mean, what you do is you divide by how many numbers you have. Okay. So in this problem, I had four, five, six, seven, eight, nine data points right there. So logically, I could take that number and I could divide it by nine. Here's a little bit of a weird thing, though. the one step in the process that you're probably going to look at me and be like, why, why did you do that? That doesn't make sense to me. When we calculate our standard deviation, what we are going to do is not divide by our sample size. We are actually going to divide by one less than that. So instead of dividing by nine, we actually divide our, um, standard, our big total right there by one less than that, or eight. Why? Turns out it works better when you have standard deviation of a sample. If you go one smaller than the sample size, we'll talk about this better, and I'll give you a more satisfactory answer when we get to chapter seven later on in the class. But basically, when you take the standard deviation of a sample, you divide by one less than the sample size. Okay, so that part is a little bit hand wavy that I'm saving for later in the class. For now, just accept instead of dividing by nine, we divide by eight. So 52 divided by eight is what I would do in order to get myself a total right there. So again, getting my little calculator out. This is taking longer than it should. I apologize. 52 divided by eight is a 6.5. Okay. 
So I divide to get an average right there. But I got an average, and this is fine and good, but earlier in the process, I squared my numbers. Well, this number is still a squared version of what I want. So my next step after I do that, to get it back to the same sort of setup I had at the beginning, I'm going to undo that squared sort of by doing a square root. And the square root of 6.5 is like 2.54. So the standard deviation for this data set is about 2.54. Now, earlier on when we were eyeballing this, we said, oh, it's probably somewhere between like one and four. It seems plausible to me that this kid is four away, this kid's two away, this kid's one away. If you average those, 2.5 seems like a reasonable estimate for your standard deviation. That's how the process works, okay? So I'm gonna share with you guys a formula right now in just a second. The formula is gonna look crazy, but it's doing these same steps right here that I just taught you guys, okay? So let me first talk about symbols. There are two symbols for standard deviation, just like there were two symbols for the mean. If you talk about the standard deviation of the whole population, you use the symbol lowercase sigma, which looks like a little O with a tail in the upper right. It's a Greek letter. Okay, so this is our symbol for standard deviation of the population. If you only know the standard deviation of your sample, you will use S instead, regular letter. Sometimes you'll see that S with a subscript of X. So S of X or just S are your symbols for standard deviation of a sample. Okay, now let me pull up my formula sheet right here and show you guys where the formula for standard deviation is. Earlier, we talked about mean, very first formula there is standard deviation right next to it and it's written in two different ways. I prefer the second way, but this is like really intense looking. So what I'm gonna do is actually write it on my formula, on my like notes, but I'm gonna show you a step at a time where it comes from, because this looks crazy, but it's what we just talked through. So to get the standard deviation of your data sets, the first thing you do in a problem is we took each value, I'm gonna do like XI, XI stands for value. We took each value and we subtracted out the mean, which is X bar. So you take a value minus the mean. After we subtracted value minus mean, step two was that we squared it so that we got a positive quantity and everything didn't just cancel out. So we squared it, okay? After we squared those numbers, what we did is we added them all up to combine them. So we took the sum of all of that. After we added them together, what we did is we divided. I divided by n minus one and gave you like a weak explanation for why it was n minus one and not, not n, but you divide by n minus one. And after you do that, at the end of the day, you take the square root of all that stuff. So that crazy looking formula is doing what I just taught you. Value minus mean, then square, then add, then divide, then square root. That's how you find a standard deviation and that's where that formula came from, okay? So one more thing on this slide. We have a vocab word that for right now is not that important. The variance of a data set is the standard deviation, which we also can abbreviate SD sometimes. It's the standard deviation before we do the square roots. So in my last problem, if I were to tab back, we got that 6.5 and then, but then we took a square root and got two point whatever. That 6.5-ish number is the variance of your data set. The symbols we use for variance are sigma squared, because it's literally the standard deviation squared, or s squared or s of x squared. So variance is just the squared version of your standard deviation. Right now, it doesn't have a lot of importance to it. It's like, why do we care? It's just a step in the process, but we will do stuff with the variance in chapter six. So you'll see this again, the variance will have its time to shine when we get to chapter six. For now, it's just a thing before we do standard deviation. Okay. So there are a couple properties of standard deviation that you have to be familiar with. And things I want you to write down as key takeaways with regards to this concept. This first one I've already referenced, but I wanna say it again. Standard deviation 
measures the te- typical or average distance to the mean and underline the mean a couple of times. Standard deviation is tied to the mean, just like IQR was tied to the median. So those concepts, standard deviation and mean, go together. Standard deviation is a distance. It measures typical distance. So since it's a distance, it always is going to be a positive quantity. So your standard deviation is always greater than or equal to zero. It's always a positive quantity. And a more spread out data set means you will have a bigger standard deviation. More spread, bigger standard deviation, less spread, smaller standard deviation. Standard deviation takes on the same units. So it takes the same units as the original problem. So my standard deviation a minute ago was 2.5. That's 2.5 pets. If your problem is in years, your standard deviation is in years. It shares the same unit as the mean in the problem. So standard deviation does have units on it. And the last thing I wanted to write down, which I've also addressed already, it is not resistance to outliers. If you add outliers in your data set, your standard deviation is gonna get heavily affected by that. So just some key things you need to understand about standard deviation. So the last big thing in this video is just taking a look at a fresh problem right here. And I want you guys to go ahead on your own and try to mimic my step one to step five with this data set. Find the standard deviation of this data set sort of by hand. Pause me, please, and try this for yourself. The first thing you'll have to do is find the mean, okay? So find the mean and then start the process and try to mirror what we did before. I'm gonna pause myself as well and come back with the work. All right, so I'm back with the work written down that you've hopefully tried out for yourself. Please take the time to do so if you didn't already. But I want you guys again to really understand what's going on here. This isn't just like some crazy formula that comes out of nowhere. It sort of makes logical sense. So the mean of this data set, if you calculate the average of those five is 41. And then what you're gonna do is figure out the distance of each point to 41, square them to make it positive, that way they don't uh, cancel each other out, add them all together, divide by n minus one, not just n. So if I have five data points, I would divide by four for this problem. And finally, square roots. So I get 34.7 for my standard deviation and my variance, that other weird thing I didn't really talk too much about, is this 1205 number right here, the number before you square rooted it. So does my standard deviation make a reasonable amount of sense? My mean is 41. My kids are kind of all over the place and there aren't that many of them. So is it plausible that if I average how far each kid is from 41, it's about 34? Well, if I look at the differences here, yeah, some of them are above 34, some of them are less than 34. It seems plausible that that would be right. So you get your standard deviation. It says on this problem to interpret the standard deviation. I haven't done this yet in the slide. So make sure you put a star by this last thing here. So students in this sample typically varied in study time Can I honestly make this just hide? I should, wow. All right, so typically varied in study time by about 34.71 minutes from the mean of 41 minutes. Standard deviation has the same units as your original problem. Typically, my kids are about 34.7 minutes off of the mean of 41. So it's just typical distance from the mean is basically how you're going to explain that. The last thing I have for you guys in this video is, the last slide is really quick and I, I'll just breeze through that, but I want to show you how you do this on the calculator. 
And this will be handy here. So you'll like this because with big data sets, finding this by hand, not so fun. It's good to practice with small data sets so you appreciate how to do it. But usually we will use calculators and technology to give us the standard deviation. We're not going to always be finding it by hand. It's more just appreciating how it's done. So stat edits, new favorite menu, type in data points. Once your data points are in there, you quit out. You're going to go back to stat. You're going to go over to calc and one variable stats, the same menu we used a few lessons back, um, is going to be what we do here. L1, I don't want a frequency list. I click calculate. And we've already seen this menu. I pointed out before, oh yeah, that's how you get a five number summary. Oh yeah, that's the mean up there of 41. Right here, we just breezed over it before because we didn't understand it yet, is our standard deviation. Now they give you S and they give you sigma. Almost always, the standard deviation you calculate will be from a sample, not a population. So you will almost always want to grab S in this problem. You see that it's 34.7, which is exactly what we got when we calculated it by hand. So the calculator isn't just doing magic, it's doing the same process that I taught to you guys, but we will use the calculator more than we'll do it by hand because who wants to take the time to always do this by hand? What's a lot more important, guys, I don't want to make sure, I want to make sure I emphasize this enough, being able to interpret and understand what standard deviation does. In real life, when you use statistics, you are going to be given the standard deviation, given these things by technology. What you need to do is have an intuitive understanding of what they mean. Oh, it's about a 34 minute distance to the mean on average is what's going on. And this last slide right here in the chapter, I'm not even going to talk too much about. This is a thing our book does. Um, it's called a state plan do conclude process, a four-step process. We will do these a lot, a lot, a lot, mostly in second semester of this class, but it's just at least exposing it to you now. So these are just four steps to use when you're thinking about a problem in statistics. And that is the end of chapter one.